There's some examples of the, the work that we're doing in different client types that we're involved with. Um, Forge Ahead in Columbus is a civic organization that is working with young professionals in the city to develop a new uh, transit, public transportation plan. Um, so their problem that they're dealing with is that too many of their young folks are headed to New York or our great city. And one of the reasons that they say that they do leave is because they're not well served with public transportation. Um, so this group of young go-getters has brought us on to help them craft that plan. Um, next one. Um, Marina City, we're familiar with that along the river. Um, we're actually working with their condominium association instead of the awkward um, once a month meeting in the weight room of the condo building. Um, <laughs> we provide this to them. Um, and so they're sharing ideas on how to improve the civic spaces in and around this building. Excellent. Um, one that some of you may be familiar with, it's, it's gotten some, some good press. Um, it's transforming Wabash Avenue. Um, the organization that we're working with is the Chicago Loop Alliance. Um, they are the SSA that represents uh, primarily State Street, um, but also, well, they're trying to expand and expand towards um, the parks, um, Grant and the Lane. Um, so you've got the parks, and you've got Michigan Avenue, and then you've got State Street, but in the middle is Wabash and the L tracks. And for all of us that hold that true grip Chicago near and dear to our hearts, it's great. Uh, but the tourists and their dollars, um, they're not so great. Uh, so they're trying to reconceptualize what Wabash Avenue is and what it can be. Uh, and so we've had. Um, 20,000 different interactions um, with people that are using that, that space every day. Whether they work, where they live, where they go to school there, um, they have something to say. Let's go to the next one. Next one. Next one. Um, that last piece, you don't have to go back to it. Um, but one thing that we, we don't compete with, and we're not really interested in competing with the mind fixers or the neighbor lands, or the next doors, or, and certainly not every block, in fact, every block would be a great uh, friend to us. Um, but other architects and planners, um, the people that thought I was crazy for leaving, thought I was crazy for asking the public what they thought about it, <coughs> because they don't have the normal schooling and such that we do. Uh, um, <laughs> but what you're seeing, and, and um, Derek mentioned um, the um, city of Big Data exhibit. And the, um, on their website, their, their description of it is how, they're, how we're starting to learn how to use data to design. Architects and planners are using that data to design. That, that's a big, huge departure from where we were when we started. Um, which, when we started, um, John Tolba, who was the former the, uh, chief technology officer, who I think just found his replacement today, yes. um, was just embarking on, and, and you guys, uh, we're just embarking on what you do and hopefully we never take for granted is that this is all available to us, data and such. Um, but data as in, you know, who, how many cars are passing a particular intersection or what the average age of this particular neighborhood is, is, is all good. Um, but we'd like to position ourselves maybe as the means to provide more uh, qualitative data, like why we like or dislike something and um, what that mood and emotion is like. Um, maybe beyond just collecting and other social media. Um, but other architects and planners using that information um, to create a better product for all of us um, is, is certainly one of our, our goals. Uh, next one. Yeah, so I mean, we're, we're, we're a young company, only a year and a half. And so um, we've got a long ways to go. I'm sure you're all hop on the website and see some things that we need to take a take a better what we need to do better at. Um, but some things that we're very interested in besides that development is um, how we analyze the data, and how we visualize the data, and how we map the data, things that I'm sure many of your experts are. But to make the information more and more easily um, consumable, uh, palatable to John and Jane Doe that we sometimes get in these sort of expert levels um, that we're all very doing very good about what we're doing amongst each other, but the general public just don't understand or don't get yet. And we can do we can do better. Really, um, excellent. 
Um, going, I guess going back to Wabash and the story about another another opportunity for people to get involved with. This one you can go through quickly. Um, these are all the ideas that have popped up um, from the public over the past um, several months. Um, I think you keep going it goes another row of this. <laughs> <laughs> we're really wrapping up demo day and getting people excited. Everybody's jumping to their feet. One, one more, because we, we want everybody <laughs> on their feet now. Um, and then the last one, which you have to take. One more, one more. Um, so another another piece of our website is where we're embarking on this. This is for everyone. And you don't have to have the money of one of our clients to go initiate something like this. Is that unapologetically, we set up a part of our website that is we call the campaign. Uh, and it's very similar to what you would see on change.org. And that a regular citizen can come on and they can introduce an idea that's important to them on how to improve their neighborhood. And then, just like change.org, doing a petition, they can go out and get their neighbors to support it. And that provides validation for an elected leader. And champion that, and then go seek the funding for those that can make it a reality. So um, this is Chris. Chris is a resident of Bronzeville. We heard about Bronzeville earlier. Um, Chris is worried about the future of his neighborhood um, because Bronzeville is really ready to just blow up and be awesome. But is it awesome for Chicago, capital C, or is it uh, awesome for Bronzeville residents that are there today? And Brownsville has an amazing history of um, African American culture, and Chris wants people to know about it. And just like when you go through Old Town and you trip and fall over all the historic identifiers that are there, um, imagine going through Brownsville and seeing sites from buildings, as he's pointing to here, um, in this photo that was um, <coughs> taken for the University of Chicago student newspaper, um, and turning them into historic identifiers. Uh, whether it be Louis Armstrong, Jack Johnson, or others that have been there or at some point in their lives spent time in this neighborhood, learned, or grown in it, um, he wants to put them up in the light. So he went around and got people involved. So now, Chris was a, a user on Transforming Wabash, so he had this opportunity. Did this, and within um, a, a month or two, had um, nearly half his goal, over 111 people supporting him. At that point, when he hit 100, he went to um, Alderman Dow and Alderman Burns, the two that um, are in this area, and uh, met with them and is working with the city to provide funding that these identifiers can be placed around Bronzeville. Um, you know, this is why this is a you know, feel good, let's do awesome stuff moment for us. Uh, but it's also a lead generation tool. Um, you know, if we have 110 in one rule, um, if 100 campaigns are created, 10 of them. Um, we'll get the support they need from their neighbors, and one of those will potentially become a state project for us. For us, if you're doing thousands of those across the country, um, then you have something. And I hope it's doing some good. Um, but our next steps into this world is turning our campaigns into a place where people can come on and find out the demographics in the neighborhood, so they can educate themselves. I won't go through a long list of all the information that you guys are already working with, but imagine everything that a, a person would need. Is, again, John or Jane Doe. To help them make educated statements and decisions based on what they want to do. That's all they're right in front of them um, and easy, easy to understand, easy to figure out. Um, yeah, so that was just a blow up of that print that I showed you earlier. And even with that Frankenstein monster, we were figuring out some pretty cool stuff. Like that one council person that thought all this was going to be dominated by young people and actually looked. Largest number of users was in the 43 to 58 age group, but uh, that was fun to talk to him after the meeting about that one. Um, you go to the next one. Then I think Derek did a good job of explaining it. This is John Tolva um, up at well at the event last week that opened up this exhibit. It's a fantastic exhibit. Go see it. Um, we hope to have our transforming Wabash information out there live for people to see and participate in. Um, but it's, it's the future of our cities, and I hope that, you know, going back to the statements that were made by my former co-workers about how crazy I was to open things up to just everybody else, um, that things like this, whether they like it or not, um, it's gonna, they're going to have to use it, and there's going to be no excuse for not using it. Anyway, um, I think that's, oh, one last thing, 
Uh, and it didn't kind of go that way, but I like to pull some hard strings. So my former hometown, if you go to the next one, that's the town square. My former hometown is Washington, Oregon, which um, when we were in the impact engine program uh, was People were like, Washington, Illinois, I didn't know it was a Washington, Illinois. <laughs> um, so Washington, Illinois is my hometown as well as my business partner. And uh, we're working with them with our application to help residents who have been displaced still have an opportunity to attend meetings and uh, put in their opinions on how, you know, politicians like to get up on the podium, you know, Mayor, or uh, Governor Quinn, and the mayor of the city. Uh, got up and said, well, we're going to build, we're going to build better than ever. What's better than ever? Building exactly how it was, or are there people there that are, have been scared to go to uh, council meetings, or for some political reason, you know, the kid won't start the next soccer game? Raise our voice and say, we need to make this a better place to live by putting in sidewalks, why they're not sidewalks in a residential neighborhood, I don't know. But we need to do that. And everybody's going to get behind that, we're going to make that happen. So. We can do that with technology. Anyway, that's us. Awesome. I ran and ran and ran and ran, but if you have any questions, I don't know, I probably ran over my time. Oh, yeah, that's great. Does anybody have any questions?